key piece that kind of comes in here is something called one-sided derivatives. So if I'm given the function, okay, if I want f of x to be equal to x squared plus 4, where x is less than or equal to 1, and negative x plus 6, when x is greater than 1. And what I want to do is I, I think we could see pretty nicely that if we were to make a sketch of that function, okay, I have a parabola, and again, this is just a sketch. I've got a parabola here, okay, and then at 1, it changes into a line with a negative slope. Okay, so something, I want to figure out what's going on there at 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the derivatives from both sides. So I'm going to look at f prime of 1 from the left. So this is a notational piece. I've got f prime, I know that's derivative, at 1 from the left. Okay, and again I'm going to use my limit definition. Okay, so I'm going to look at the limit as h goes to 0. I'm going to set it up as x plus h squared plus 4, that's my f of x plus h, minus x squared plus 4, all over h. Now there's a nice trick here. Again, I'm going to try to plug in 0 because it is a limit. Plug it in there for h, and the 0 is undefined. So we need to kind of think of some work to do. Now the nice part about here is if you're having, if you're approaching a point that you actually know, so is f prime of 1 from the left, you want to know what's happening with the derivative at 1. So you can actually, and sometimes this is an easy algebraic example here, makes the algebra a little bit easier, I'm going to let 1 be x. So 1 plus h squared plus 4 minus 1 squared plus 4. Now if you notice the algebra becomes a little bit easier here. Because now, instead of subtracting something with an h in it, I actually have a number. So I'm going to distribute this out, so I'm going to get 1 plus 2h plus h squared plus 4 minus, this is just 5, all over h. Cancel out here, I'm going to get the 1's cancel, okay, the 4 and then the negative 5, those all cancel. And then again, at each step I'm plugging in h to be 0. So now I can take out an h, and now I have 2 plus h all over h. The h's cancel, and that h just goes to 0. So what does this mean? This implies, okay, I'm just left with that 2, that f prime of 1 from the left is 2. So instead of getting an answer with x's in it, I'm actually getting an exact answer, which sometimes can save you a little bit of time on the algebra. Okay, let's look at f prime of 1 from the right. So f prime of 1 from the right is going to be the limit as you go to 0 of negative x plus h plus 6 minus negative x plus 6 all over h. I'm going to do the same idea here. I'm going to plug in 1, okay? I'm going to plug in 1 because I want to know what's happening exactly at 1. Even though it's approaching 1 from the right, I'm going to look at what's happening exactly at 1. Okay? Kind of allows us to skip that end step there. So now I have negative 1 minus h plus 6 minus 5 all over h. So again, if I subtract 6 by 1, I'm going to get 5. Those are going to cancel, minus 5. So I'm just going to get negative h over h, which is just simply negative 1. So that implies that f prime of 1 from the right is going to be negative 1. So we know that the derivative coming in from the right is negative 1, and the derivative coming in from the left is 2. This was kind of a preview for our next chapter. We can then say that this implies that the derivative of f of x 
at x equals 1 is DNE because f prime of 1 from the right doesn't equal f prime of 1 from the excuse me, f prime of 1 from the left doesn't equal f prime of 1 from the right. And I, in the next section, section 3.2, we're going to talk about something called differentiability. And that gets into when derivatives are going to be defined at points and when they're not.